When US Pacific Fleet conducted its first exercise focused on manned unmanned teaming in April, some familiar systems showed up, the distinctive silhouettes of a Zumwalt class destroyer, an Independence variant littoral combat ship and an unmanned sea hunter in the water, plus a Navy variant of the Air Force's MQ-9 Reaper drone in the air. But a newcomer, with an equally eye-catching silhouette, also played a big role in the event, the vanilla ultra-long endurance UAV flew overhead, providing persistent video surveillance over the multi-day event. It brought with it the intelligence gathering capability of a drone with the firepower of a warship. The vanilla unmanned business line is owned by Platform Aerospace, a small company located outside Naval Air Station Patterson River in Southern Maryland. While the vanilla UAV was originally designed and built for the sole purpose of breaking world records, which it did, with a demonstrated 5-plus day flight in 2017, Platform Aerospace wants to turn it into a must-have asset for the Navy and Marine Corps, as well as other domestic and industry buyers. Vanilla Unmanned highlights three features about its UAV, world record endurance, unmatched payload and then a disruptive cost profile, said Greg Papianu, Chief Growth Officer at Platform Aerospace. The drone is marketed as being capable of 10 days of flight with 30 pounds of internally stored payloads, or several days of flight with up to 150 pounds of internal and external payloads in a multi-mission heavy lift mode. Those specifications will exceed both the endurance and the payload capacity of its peers in Group 3, Papianu said, referring to classes of unmanned aerial systems. Group 3 UAS weigh less than 1,320 pounds and fly at less than 250 knots. All this comes at less than $2 million per system, not including the payload, he said. That puts it in the cost range of attributable systems, reusable, but inexpensive enough to lose in battle, that the US military has sought in recent years. The company is already working with military customers, including the Office of Naval Research, US Southern Command and US Special Operations Command. The Navy seems more interested in maximizing endurance, while SOCOM wants to maximize payload capacity, Papianu said. If you start with a 7 to 10 day airplane, you've got a lot of freedom there to put stuff on, Tim Healy, the senior vice president for strategy and a retired Navy rear admiral, told Defense News during the visit. The company's chief technology officer, Dan Edwards, said the aircraft was designed around endurance. And then our goal when we missionize it is maintaining that endurance. So anybody that comes with a payload, we kind of have this fun little dance of, how do we integrate it with the least impact to the endurance? He said during the visit. It's fun when you start with that much endurance. How much of it you can give away for some crazy integration? Papianu noted that the 10-day max endurance fundamentally changes the calculus for how the Navy would employ it. For example, the service could set up a station in Siganella, Italy, for launching and recovering the vehicles and to conduct maintenance between flights. From Siganella, a location with an established supply chain and no danger pay requirements for contractors, the Navy could have days of aerial coverage across Africa, Europe, the Eastern Mediterranean and the Middle East. Platform Aerospace isn't trying to compete with the MQ-9 Reaper, which the Air Force has moved away from, but in which the Navy and Marine Corps are increasingly interested as a land-based Group 5 UAS to support amphibious operations. Papianu is pitching vanilla UAS for the boring missions so services can use more costly drones for high-value operations. With the Navy in mind, the company is developing a vertical takeoff and landing variant that could operate from a ship at sea for about 24 hours with a 50-pound payload. That's much less than the baseline variant but three times the endurance of similar products on the market, Papianu said. The vertical takeoff and landing variant, which is funded through a project with Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, recently reached its critical design review and is set for testing in the first quarter of 2022. Vanilla Unmanned has an incentive to move quickly now that it's completed its first successful Navy demonstration. It's our own money, a bunch of it, to make this work. So we can't really waste time, Healy said. He acknowledged the service has done more in recent years to engage small businesses, but ultimately there's still no single contract that will get Vanilla Unmanned out of the valley and into some kind of Navy or Marine Corps acquisition effort. That kind of contract would be a significant departure to how Platform Aerospace has worked for the past 27 years, said CEO Kurt Parsons. The company's original mission was to do one-off aircraft integration work. For example, a defense contractor would want to prove a new payload can work on its platform, 
so it would pay Platform Aerospace to perform engineering, manufacturing and modification work, and then acquire flight clearances. The company still does this, with about half of its 80 employees working on aircraft modification and the other half working on vanilla unmanned. Parsons said the company was helping other contractors develop ISR aircraft for the military, but he wanted to get more directly involved. When Healy suggested partnering with the original vanilla unmanned designers a couple of years ago, the time seemed right to jump into the market, Parsons said. It already held world records, he added. We just went in and said, let's enhance it, make it mission capable and then advance the technology.